Hello and welcome to The Exchange on CBC News Network. I'm Bruce Selry. On tonight's show, the pharma CEO dubbed the most hated man in America has been arrested. He's accused of running his companies like a Ponzi scheme. Plus, the world of do-it-yourself kicks it up a notch. A Toronto company is pitching a DIY mortgage. And she's a force of nature. Hurricane Hazel McCallion is one of Canada's longest serving mayors. And at age 94, she's embarking on a new career. But first, a major shakeup in the telecom industry that could affect your wireless bill. Shaw Communications has acquired Wind Mobile. That means Wind, a six-year-old upstart, has just elbowed its way into a three-way oligopoly dominated by Bell, Rogers and TELUS. If you live in Western Canada, you're likely very familiar with Shaw. It's the region's largest cable company. Shaw also provides internet and some home phone service. It had plans to build its wireless business from scratch, but ditched them four years ago. Now it has a new strategy. Shaw has bought the Toronto-based Win for $1.6 billion. And with it, 940,000 wireless customers in Ontario, BC and Alberta. Compare that to the price tag of $135 million. That's how much Wynn's previous owner sold it for in 2014. In the deal, Shaw also gets 50 megahertz of spectrum. According to analysts, this means Shaw can now effectively compete with Rogers, Bell and TELUS. As one telecom pundit said, the terms Big Three and New Entrant no longer have the same meaning in the Canadian communications marketplace. Shaw says it expects the deal to close by next summer, provided it clears regulatory hurdles. So what does this mean for consumers? Wind has touted itself as the affordable option with fair prices and no hidden fees. Many one if that will still be the case. Wind already has a great value proposition right now, being the low price uh, uh, in the market, and we think, hey, what an opportunity for us to bring Shaw brand, our, our wherewithal, our balance sheet, all the services and products we have to be able to continue to offer Canadians good value, good choice, new products and services. So he's promising good value, but in an interview with the Globe and Mail, the CEO admitted, I see pricing somewhat discounted, but probably closer to the incumbents as we go forward. In today's trading, the stocks of the three incumbents fell. TELUS suffered the most, dropping to its lowest level in more than two years. TELUS is Shaw's biggest competitor in the West in television and internet, and now in wireless too. Shaw's stock price also fell today, with investors concerned about the cost of the deal and how much cash Shaw will have left. Aaron Saltzman is the CBC's senior reporter for Consumer Affairs. Aaron, let's start with this question. What does this mean for Wynn customers? Well, uh, Shaw says it's going to keep Wynn's management in place, and Wynn's CEO says the brand isn't going anywhere. But the question is, what does this mean for Wynn's plans? They start at about 35 bucks a month, which is generally lower than the big three. But they also have, uh, in many cases, unlimited data, and that's something that the big three have shied away from. And some analysts that I've spoken to uh, suggest that prices may stay about the same in the short term, but they're not so certain there won't be a cap placed on that data. Um, the, on a positive note, though it's Shaw that's going to be taking over the building uh, the transition to a faster LTE network for winds win customers so a lot of those complaints that some of those customers had outside major centers of calls dropping out and that sort of thing might go away sooner what does this mean for wireless pricing I mean the big theme here has been about introducing a higher level of competition in the Canadian market will it do that uh, well, that's the million dollar question, or I guess maybe the $80 a month question. Um, we have some evidence that introducing a fourth carrier actually does lower prices. If you take a look at uh, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, in Saskatchewan there's Saskatchewan, Manitoba, MTS, prices for cell phone plans in those two provinces are generally about $15 lower than they are in Ontario. But uh, take a look at how Shaw competes with the big three on internet pricing. I'm going to look at down here to get the numbers correct on this. Um, standard internet package 30 megs down five up 300 gigs of data the big three charge almost exactly the same price per month nearly to the dollar about 65 bucks a month Shaw's price for about the same package is $73 a month mm. clearly a little bit more expensive so the concern in some quarters is that instead of helping to lower prices Shaw might actually hike prices up a little closer to those of the big three and it might not make that big a difference at all thank you Aaron you bet. 
For more, let's turn to Walid Hijazi, Associate Professor at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management. I want to ask you what you think will change for consumers after this deal closes. I'll start by saying this is a fantastic development. I think it's good news for consumers with a fourth player, but a player that has um, the assets in place to deliver what we'll call economies of scope because they have such a well-developed business model in Western Canada. I think this is great news for Canadians. Now, it doesn't sound like wind is going to be a price leader here. No, not at all. And, and in fact, they'll probably converge the three of them over, oh, I'm sorry, the four of them over time. So win to the incumbents. Uh, but I, I, I really do believe that over time, the, the strategies that they have will converge at some point in the middle. Uh, we referenced the stock performance for TELUS today. It's yeah. down fairly dramatically. The concern for them is that things heat up in Western Canada? Yeah, absolutely. This is bad news for the incumbents. And all of the arguments have been making over the past many years that there's not really room in Canada for a fourth place. Player. The fact that Wind has been able to secure financing in the last several months in the order of $500 million. In addition, the fact that they got such a huge price tag mm. from Shaw uh, th uh, in, in, in this purchase just tells you the business case is there. There's sufficient room in the Canadian market for a fourth player. The business model tells you that. And the fact that so much money in the last five, six months has gone towards when just tells you that. Does this do enough for competition in this country? That's a great question. When Wind first opened and Najib Sawiris actually did uh, a show, uh, an interview on this show many years ago, talked about all of the commitments that the Canadian government made in inviting a fourth player into the Canadian market. I really believe at that time there wasn't the political will. In other Having said that, what WIND has done over the last several years with all of the obstacles put in place to competing on a level playing field, they must be commended. But I think that this is a different play. The fact that there's a major Canadian cable company that's involved in, uh, home, in cable, internet, uh, um, home phone, now you bring along um, uh, cell phone or mo mobile services. The economies of scope makes it, it has a lot of sense. Is this an acknowledgement for Sh from Shaw that mobile and data really is the future? I mean, Shaw, their business historically has been cable. So many people are cutting their cable, keeping their internet access, but cutting their traditional cable. Yeah, that's, that's really table stakes. The bottom line is if they don't really have mobility in their portfolio, that will be a limitation for growth going forward. You look at the hockey stick in terms of um, um, the growth in, um, in mobile services, they have to be in there. And the fact that they went after wind just tells you how much space there is in the market for a fourth player. What about foreign ownership? That's been a part of this dynamic for a very, very long time, or part of the question for yeah. a very, very long time. What should change? What will change on that front? What will change is a different question. What should change, in my opinion, I think the federal government should stand up. They should announce a given timeline, two years, and simply say, two years from today, we're going to lift all foreign ownership restrictions hmm. on investment in the telecom sector. We've studied this carefully, and two points I'll make. One point, there's absolutely no economic justification at all for our restrictions on foreign ownership in that sector. And number two, the economic implications in terms of productivity and employment in the Canadian economy, broadly based, are quite significant. We've been able to demonstrate rigorously that by reducing restrictions on foreign ownership in telecom would improve the competitiveness hmm. of the Canadian economy. These are attractive assets? They would be attractive assets in your view? Ab oh, absolutely. This was exactly the right play, yes. How does uh, the Canadian market compare to other developed nations? We talk about this a lot, whether or not we pay too much, do we pay more, all those kinds of questions. We pay a lot more and our, the quality of our services is not nearly up to par. Uh, if you look at all of the objective comparisons of Canada to other developed countries, uh, it's really inexplicable as to why this old policy continues to stand in Canada. It's to the detriment of the average Canadian. Now, the other dynamic here is content. So Shaw has it, Rogers has it, Bell has it. How big a role does that play in the whole, in the whole strategy? Yeah, especially with the convergence of broadcasting and, and telecom and mobile. It's a, it's a very important part of the, in order to have the whole piece. So I would argue that having access to original content mm -hmm. is an important source of competitive advantage. Thank you very much for your time. You're more